Hi, I'm Tam with the Scove with your solar storm forecast for the week of February 25th. The sun has picked up in activity this week, not so much in terms of flares, but in terms of solar storms and ejections. We've had a couple wispy solar storms uh, about center disk, one there and one there, and these are Earth directed, so we might feel some effects around the 24th and 25th, but pretty minor. The big stories are the prominence eruption that we had here that you barely see. If you blink, you miss it, but on the backside, it's a gorgeous eruption, and we also have this gorgeous uh, prominence eruption that happens here. Bam! You see it right there? That erupted, but we also have a synergistic, almost sympathetic eruption that occurs right there. And that part might be Earth-directed that might actually hit us somewhere around the 28th. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see we are way below the uh, seafloor when it comes to flare activity. And this quiet is going to continue to last easily for the next three or four days and probably uh, beyond that because there's just not a lot of flaring active regions on the disk or even about to rotate onto the east limb at this time. Although we haven't had much problems with flares lately, we did have some enhanced radiation levels due to that prominence eruption that occurred just behind the west limb. As we, you can see, we actually had elevated radiation levels starting around the 21st that lasted for several days uh, and died down around the 23rd. And these uh, elevated particle levels cause uh, problems with GPS and amateur radio communications at high latitudes, as you can see in this map here. So if you are a ham radio operator and you had issues uh, over the past couple days, this is probably why. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see uh, we were pretty quiet as the weekend progressed, but uh, then we started picking up again, and around the 24th, we actually got hit by that wispy solar storm, and that combined with uh, the high speed wind that we're in right now has kind of popped us back up over storm levels and has given us some really good aurora. But in the meantime, we've also crossed what we call a sector boundary. And so what was predominantly southward field, which is great for aurora, is now going to be predominantly northward field. And that's not so great for aurora. So we may not see anything above unsettled conditions over the next uh, few days until about the 28th when a new solar storm, a uh, wispy solar storm might hit us. And speaking of aurora, these latest solar storm levels have given us gorgeous aurora in New Zealand and also in Newcastle upon Tyne in UK. And we've had gorgeous aurora all over Canada, including Saskatchewan, Alberta, and also Vancouver. And the aurora even dipped down into the United States. Uh, it was visible at Lake Champlain in Vermont and also at Spirit Lake in Idaho. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. Now, you remember that really long, snaky filament that was kind of making its way around the backside last week? Well, here it is. You can see it snaking around the backside of the sun. But watch it very closely, because right there, boom! Do you see that? It erupted. This huge thing. It's leaving this monstrous scar across the sun. But it happened on the backside. It would have been gorgeous had it been Earth's side. We would have gotten a beautiful solar storm and gorgeous images. As it was, we got a particle radiation storm, but that's about it. So we're very anxiously waiting for this uh, region to rotate back into Earth view, which should start, the far end should start somewhere in about three or four days. And it might be slightly active because there's a lot of reorganization of the fields going on right now. I mean, it's still burning. So we're very interested to see what it looks like once it rotates Earth's side. Returning to the disk, you can see it's not nearly as exciting as the backside right now. We had region 22, 82, and 88 that have now rotated past the west limb, and we're left with only three active regions uh, on the Earth-facing disk, and they're pretty sleepy. Uh, we won't see any really good activity until region 2280 rotates back on the east limb, and that won't be for the next three days. But that's the, the region that is kind of leading the edge. It's on the east edge of that filament eruption. Uh, so we might see some very interesting activity once that region comes back into Earth view. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next few days, NOAA is giving us about a 35% chance of a major storm on the 24th and down to about a 25% chance for minor storm over the next few days as we continue to go through that high speed stream and feel the effects of that. Uh, that expect that those effects to die down over the next couple days and possibly rise again when we get that uh, storm on the 28th. 
uh, but that may just be a minor impact. At mid-latitudes, we're only expecting about a 30% uh, chance for activity, which then dies down, of course, over the, the end of the week. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next few days, we really are remaining flatlined. There's very little activity on the Earthside disk right now. NOAA is only giving us about a 1% chance for an M-class flare over the next few days, and I'm extending that further out over the next five days because there's just not any activity in sight. All of the active regions right now that are on the Earth-facing disk are very sleepy, so you amateur radio operators should be very, very happy. Uh, we're not, we shouldn't see any disruptions. The only thing is that one that once that old region 2280 rotates back in the next three or four days, it may have a, a slight increase in the flare production, but uh, seriously doubt it at this point. Also, we did just exit a, a slightly elevated levels of particle radiation, but uh, those levels are expected to remain normal now into the foreseeable future. So this week has brought us yet another week of really quiet conditions when it comes to flares, but not so much for solar storms. We're in the middle of a high-speed stream right now, which has been compounded by a couple wispy solar storms, and that has popped us over storm levels, which of course disrupts the amateur radio operations, but also brings us some gorgeous aurora that we've had over the past 24 to 48 hours, and that may continue over the next day or so until things begin to quiet down again. We also have another wispy solar storm that seems to be Earth-directed that might hit us around the 28th and possibly cause some unsettled conditions yet again. But other than that, the only thing we're waiting for is that beautiful filament eruption region, that old scar to kind of rotate around to the east limb and come back into Earth view so we can see what it looks like post-eruption. That's when activity might actually pick up a little bit because we know there's still a lot of magnetic reorganization going on uh, in that region. But until then, things should remain pretty quiet. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.